I'll make a motion to accept the meeting minutes of what was it, seven six or something? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Any do discussion? We to, well, <laughs> do we need to do roll call? Well, I did. Um, do we have to do an audio roll call, John? Because I just went through the whole list and I can see everybody. I, I, I don't think know. We're supposed I, to, but I, I don't know the. I know we, it's. We, yeah, we should do that because I know there's nobody in the public on, but um, it is being recorded. So maybe somebody that's bored on Friday night will want to watch this. Um, so I'll start with myself, uh, Tim Dabrio. Tom Leve. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, if you call the names, Tim, and then we can just say yes, and then okay. it, it, it's harder. Then we won't talk over each other. Sure. Sandra Jones. Yes. Michael Keister. Aye. Chris Sterndale. I don't vote. He doesn't vote. Yeah. Tom Bukowitz. Here. Kelly Gordon. Yes. Tom LaBelle. Yes. Sean Green. Donnie, you muted. I can't hear you. These headphones don't work. There Sorry. There yes, you. I'm here. There you go. Yeah, yeah the headphones. Uh, yes. Michelle King. Yes. Jim Stevens. Yes. And Lorraine Petrini. I don't need to say yes or no, but I've got everybody noted. Um, okay. Are you going to do the public minutes from 2 6 as well? Yes. Okay. All right. I'll make a motion. We accept. The me meeting minutes from February 6th, as written. I'll second. All in favor? Sandra Jones, yes. Michael Keister, yes. Tom LaVey, yes. Thomas Budkevich, yes. John Green, yes. King, yes. John Decker, yes. Kelly Gordon, yes. Jim Stevens, yes. And Tim Dabrio, yes. And Sean Green, did we get you? Well, did he already do it or is he doing it now? Oh, he can you can you guys still not hear me? Oh no, we can. Okay. I just had to switch out the headphones. So yeah, okay. I'm, a yeah I'm a yes on that. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, everyone. So I'm taking it. There's no abstentions. And since everybody voted yay. Wonderful. So we've got both of the meeting minutes from 2.6 and 7.16 approved. Um, who was able to attend? I know John Decker, I did see you on the list for the budget, the finance workshop. Um, and Tom, I think you were there, and Sandra, you were there. I was, and, not, I was not able to. I canceled at the last moment, but I got all the information anyway, so I was able to review it and read it. Okay. I'm reviewing the materials now. Okay. And Tom, I was you were able, able to? Yeah, I was able to attend. Okay. Um, so any thoughts? Does anybody have any thoughts on how the th – this was my third conference, but anybody that has gone for the first time – be interested to hear what you thought. I had technical difficulties with it. Um, I uh, was hoping to be able to take care of uh, my attendance on the desktop rather than the phone. Uh, I, I like to see a larger screen than, than what's available to me in my hand. Um, and I found that when it, it appeared that whenever the the speaker was uh, putting up a new slide on his shared screen. There was about 10 seconds of audio delay, or not delay, but just uh, audio silence. And um, so I missed a lot of what was said and often critical portions of it, I believe. Uh, I did transition to the phone during the lunch break. And from that point forward, uh, I was just having to uh, squint to see the the um, <laughs> the shared screen material, but but otherwise I was able to get it with full audio. Mm. 
so anybody that joined for the first time, uh, Tom, Tom, um, Sandra, you weren't able to make it. What did you think of the information that was provided? Um, I was already familiar with a lot of it. Um, we did find there were some interesting things in there. Like uh, they explained the Brentwood Budget Committee versus Brentwood School District case where they decided that it was possible for the Budget Committee to reduce the school budget without having to specify any specific cuts that would have to be made. And how about you, Tom? I wasn't able to. Uh, oh, you weren't able to. But I, I have all the materials that I'm, I'm going through. Them okay. Now. And for those of you that weren't able to, I did reach out to, um, to them because they did say we would be able to share access for all of the presentations. But I know the, the first few presentations, or really the bulk of the morning, um, I thought was most beneficial um, to, especially for newer members, to learn a little bit more about your responsibilities. Um, I thought... To be honest, I thought the content was better than any of the other two I've been to, so which was interesting it being virtual. Um, John Decker, what did you think? Because you've been to a few of those these, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I the first session, you know, the morning session, I usually find uh, the most beneficial. Um, like you said, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and I, I did join on the computer. Didn't have really any difficulties until like the first afternoon session um, when she said to switch this the session thing and mine just hung up but then I was able to actually join with zoom directly so that was really helpful it just took me a while to get in and then of course the uh, lady in the, the last segment had her own difficulties with her mic dropping out but um, which I was kind of bummed because I was really looking forward to that tax session so but yeah i mean it's it's really helpful it you know it's just a great refresher um you know it's we missed the meal this year which kind of stunk but <laughs> i cooked a great lunch that was John. Good. <laughs> yeah 15 minute lunch that was yeah. really weird very generous <laughs> and you have to go make your own sandwich yeah yeah um, well, I, I, I did send this lengthy document to everybody. It's like 150 pages. Um, I know it's a you lot of reading. You printed it? <laughs> I did. I printed a copy. I, I don't like reading on a screen. I cannot read 150 pages on a screen. My eyes would go crazy. So, um, mm -hmm. but if you, um, I would encourage you to kind of peruse that document because there's a lot of great information in there that pertains to this committee and what our roles and responsibilities are. Um, but if you have any questions, you know, don't hesitate to bring them up to the committee um, as you're going through that document. And again, I will try to follow back up with uh, the association to see if we can find out how I can share uh, the rest of the presentations with the rest of the committee if you want to go on and watch them. That would be very helpful. Has anyone gone back to the, the recorded session and, and uh, perused some of that material? No, I have not. But that, that's what they said would be, we should be able to share though, right? Correct. It's just right now, the only way I, you know, I can share is by sharing my login information with everybody. Uh, I'm not sure if that's what they want me to do. I mean, it's not, nothing private in there, but I wasn't privately texting anybody or anything like that during the presentations. But um, so hopefully they get back to me soon so I can share the information while it's relevant. Um, any other feedback on the workshop? The, the first part of the morning, the session on the, the segment on, uh, on the governor's directives, emergency directives, I thought would be very, very important to us. And that's much of what I missed. So I'm, I'm hoping to be able to recover or route into that sometime and, and see what it was. And Maybe when uh, Chris covers some of the town stuff, he can talk a little bit about um, some of the information that, or some of the stuff that the town has done to get some state aid and state funds from um, for relief. And Kelly as well. Yes. Okay, if there's no other feedback, we can move on to the agenda. Um, for those of you that are, are new to the committee and um, 
you know, we typically try to plan our agenda well in advance so you can plan for our meetings. In years past, the meetings really ramp up uh, starting in late December and into January. This year being that we're now SB2, uh, we essentially follow the school board, uh, how the school has done their budget and deliberative session will be on that same schedule. So essentially we'll be having two del deliberative sessions or hearings, one for the school, one for the town, um, and uh, as well as hearings. And they'll both be for the most part in the same week. So uh, prepare yourselves. It should be a busy month of January and I don't think we're getting any snow this winter, so we should be fine. Um, so typically we meet on the first and third Thursday of the month going into the busiest part of the season. Um, and as Mr. Sterndale pointed out so nicely that uh, it just so happens that two of the Thursdays or one of the Thursdays we would normally meet is on Christmas Eve and the other one is on New Year's Eve. So uh, those two in December are definitely out and given that we'll be leading into the month of January um, with a very busy month of January, we're going to have to plan ahead as far as what we want to do. Uh, Mr. Sterndale and Mrs. Gordon, I'd appreciate your feedback on kind of working backwards from the dates in January um, as to how you feel the budget committee should plan our schedule, I guess, in December when you'd be able to present your proposed budget and then a final um, budget proposal to the budget committee. So I guess I'd be looking for feedback from you so that we there, our committee can move back mm -hmm. and build our, our calendar. Is there any reason why Thursdays have always been the uh, meetings? Well, the school board typically meets on Wednesdays um, okay. and the select board meets on Mondays. I think that's part of it. As far as which Thursday of the month, um, I think there's probably some flexibility there, but I know we typically meet um, after or just before the next school board meeting. That makes sense. Room availability community center probably had something to do with that too. You get some priority there, but I, I think historically it's um, been a thin night for other boards and committees Thursday. So um, are you looking for us to um, look at our timelines and then bring to you guys um, our timeline so that we can kind of coordinate how to plan our meetings? Yeah, I mean, I think we're basically going to have to be three to four weeks ahead of where we have been in years past. Um, when I it think comes, so too. Yep. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was hoping, j just so everybody's aware, um, I'll, I'll give you some of the deadlines that we have, um, but we have to hold our <clears throat> deliberative session for the town uh, between January 30th and February 6th. Um, so that's when we have to present the actual budget to the town and that's when like town meeting day used to be, we can debate uh, the Warren articles and the budget itself. And then it, um, it then it's going to go on the ballot in March. Um, but working backwards from that, the public hearing on the budget would have to be the week of January 19th. So again, that's almost three weeks ahead of when we've done it in the past. Um, which Mrs. Gordon, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but that's pretty much in line with, with the school, with the school board's calendar, correct? Yeah, it's exactly the same. Yeah. 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 So both follow the same, the same guidelines put forth by the state. Um, so yeah, I guess I would just like feedback from both of you on how we can best build our calendar. Um, I don't think looking ahead, we don't probably don't have to have a meeting again in October, but I know starting in November, we'll be ramping it up quite a bit um, to get everything presented. Okay. So we should have a better idea by that meeting um, what our timeline, you know, hopefully we will have an understanding of when our deliberative session will be planned and that so that we can coordinate because we don't have any of that scheduled yet. Okay. Uh, Tim, I, I don't, uh, I think the public hearing is really the drop dead date for, for your planning purposes. Once you, once you have the public hearing, you can, uh, you take, take a few days to uh, make your recommendations after that. I think historically you've done that the same night, but you, you have only until I think the 23rd or so to return the budget to the, at least to the select board and probably also to the school board. Um, 
you, you have to hold the public hearing by the 19th, right? Um, which is a Tuesday. Um, I, I think historically you've left yourself a little room for weather. Um, so I, I think public hearings probably need to be done the week of the 11th. So um, it looks like between the 13th and the 19th. Yeah. And then, it, yeah, we have to have that completed and delivered for the 21st, Chris. Yeah, so if you, if you want to tell yourselves now that you're going to do your, your recommendations and finalizing the same night as the public hearing, uh, you, could, you could pick public hearing dates tonight. Uh, that, I think, would help us build back a schedule. Um, and I can bring those back to the board and we can build off of those as well. January. And I think so, given the, the short time frame, we, we would probably appreciate some guidance on how many nights you want to hear from us. Um, you know, I think historically we've scheduled a whole bunch and then dropped a few of them along the way, but I don't think there's room to do that anymore where we're now crammed onto the school schedule, same schedule as the school. Yeah, I think in the past we've done a couple of presentations with department heads on two separate nights. I think last year I don't think we needed both nights, but I'm not sure if we'd want to maybe try to pile that into one evening instead of two. Um, So, you, Mrs. Sterndale, you'd like us to select a date for the public hearing right now? Is that what you're thinking? And during that week in January? We're gonna do, are you going to do them on two separate nights? Uh, one for the town, one for the school? And if so, you know, at least what week does that fall in? Uh, are you going to do them on the same night? Are you, um, you know, if you, if you want to go earlier, that's going to push everything back. Uh, the early. public hearing for the, this, board um, last year went past midnight, I believe. So we don't want to do them both on the same night. That would be um, not the same night. <laughs> I would agree that it would put too much pressure on everybody, the board, as well as the people who were presenting, if we tried to do it um, in one night. So I think two nights is very definitely at least needed. So I would, I would say we can, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Keister. I just wanted to mention that there's a possibility that there will be a school bond hearing in that mix as well. Okay. So, yeah, it looks like we have between the 12th and the 19th to get everything done. That's one week total for two hearings. So Possibly. it looks like we're going to be meeting more than on one Thursday night then. <laughs> <laughs> so I would propose that we consider either Wednesday, January 13th or Wednesday or Thursday, January 14th as a proposed town meet, town hearing day. The reason I'm thinking that is it would give us time if there was a snowstorm and we had to postpone things. It still gives us a few days um, wiggle room to move that meeting. Right, so that's one day. What are we about the school hearing? So I think the school will have input into that, um, yeah. and they haven't. We haven't even looked at it yet. But after this meeting, I'll bring it back, and then they will weigh in on that, and I can bring back that for you guys to weigh in on. But it helps if I have the fourteenth as the date that this board is looking to have their hearing, the first one in or second one, depending on how we do it.
any other feedback on that? So I, I guess I would move um, that we propose that we have our hearing on Thursday, January 14th. I agree. I yeah. think that's great. For the town. Correct. So when do we want to do the school one? Um, I'd want to get input from the school board on that. Yeah. They'll pick that date, but if we have our date, they can pick theirs based off ours. Well, they're both our dates. Cool. They're, well, they're, you can give me a date and I can bring it back to the school right. board, but typically they weigh in on, I mean, because, I mean, that's how we usually do it, but if, well, I wasn't on this committee last year. I was the alternate, but that's how it worked. Right. So last year, that would have been the 14th because it was the Thursday in between. Right. So that would have been basically the only choice. Um, now that we're SB2 for both the town and the school, that kind of puts a constraint on us and we have to squeeze everything into that one week. Right. So it's the school a, board will be doing their hearing that week too, I imagine, right? They have to. Right. They're both actually budget committee hearings. Oh yeah, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so if you want to go ahead and schedule it, I guess I'll bring it back to them and tell them it's scheduled. So it's just a matter of Obviously, Wednesdays are probably not good for the school, right? Because of, so we wouldn't want to do that on the 13th. What about that Tuesday? Sorry? I said, what about the Tuesday? Tuesday the 12th? Yeah. That would be the very first day. Um, and that's a possibility, I guess. Sorry, Tim, I'm not trying to take over. <laughs> Okay. John, John, where are you? Where are you seeing that it has to be no earlier than the twelfth? There's a publication deadline, but I don't. Just, know. is there a statute on the first available date? So I pulled up um, the D DRA SB two towns and schools annual meeting March 2021 timeline, yeah. and. Basically, the 12th, there's three things listed for the 12th. It's the last day to post notice of the January 19th budget hearing. So, and if, if we had it on the 19th. Uh, last day to post notice of a bond hearing. And it's also the last day for petition warrant articles for schools and towns. And it's the last day for negotiated cost items to be finalized. So, basically that's the day that stuff is finalized. So you wouldn't want to do it earlier than the 12th. Yeah, it's that petition deadline and the, and the collective bargaining ones that really box you in there, isn't it? Right. Okay. And the 19th is the last day to hold it. So, and the 12th is actually could be early by a few hours. <laughs> yeah, and from my understanding, John, the 12th is just the earliest date you can post it for the 19th. It sounds like it has to be a seven day notice. So uh, if, we, if we posted the information on the 10th for meeting on the 17th. No, the, the risk is that you get a petition warrant article that requires an, an expenditure. And you will have to, you know, you'll have to weigh in on that and, and include that in your hearing. So, right. you, know, you know, at least on the, you know, I, I don't know if you've ever had a petition on the school district side that requires an expenditure, but it's theoretically possible. And we would have to rehear. So should we go with the 12th and the 14th then? Just so that we have a date scheduled and we know we still have time after that if even though there's not gonna be snow, if some kind of <laughs> occurrence happens, we have time. I would recommend staying away from the 12th because something could happen um, late on the 12th that impacts what we need to, to vote on. So okay. I'm thinking um, 12th to the 19th is exclusive of the 12th. So Chris, does the, is there a deadline for when things have to be brought in by like close of business on the 12th? Yeah. That or can they? Yeah, close of business. And, and you, you can, um, 
as long as, let's say, hypothetically, you scheduled a, a school hearing to be on the 12th uh, and something came in at 4.30 on the 12th, um, you could just continue your hearing of the 12th. You know, as, as you wrapped up that meeting, you, you could just continue the meeting to a time and date certain, which would be the 14th and still be legal, still be posted and give yourself 48 hours to, you know, respond or, or think about or deal with whatever walked in the door at 430. So I wouldn't be scared of the 12th. All right. Thank you. Well, I like that idea because we're still going to have to, oh yeah, you already said the snow part, no snow, but it could happen. So I guess are we more scared of the snow, the 19th, or more scared of the 12th? We air closer to the earlier side. At the rate we're going, you may have a Zoom backup for your public hearing anyway, so weather wouldn't be a concern. Oh, true. So how does the board feel? Do we feel uh, we'd like to move forward with the 12th and the 14th, or do you want to push them forward a few days to give more time after the 12th? And we could look I at- I think we should take it Monday. after the 12th for safety surgeon. What would you propose then, Sandra? Pardon me? What would you propose instead of the 12th? What was wrong with the 13th? It's two long nights. Yeah, those meetings tend to go till after midnight and then we have to work the next day and then do it again. Yeah. Okay. I don't really want to do it on a Friday either. Yeah, what's wrong with the 15th? It's a Friday. Yeah, I don't want to do it on a Friday. But you have the whole weekend to recover. <laughs> Works better for me, honestly, but I'm in for anything. To me, it doesn't matter what, what day of the week it is. But then again, I don't work like you guys, so. So then I would propose we consider maybe the the town on the 14th and the school on Monday the 18th. That sounds good to me. Okay. That's, that's fine. That's fine with me. Martin Luther King Day, if that matters. We can do things legally on that day as a town, can't we? Because the school can run, we can, we can choose to run on a legal holiday. Yes. Yeah, I don't know if you, if you have anything, if the school has anything with it, uh, anything contractual with its employees about those days, your staff, you may not be able to bring your staff to a public hearing that day. I can check into that. I don't, I don't know for sure. Should we make those dates tentative then until um, our school? she gets back to us? Is our school even in session on that day? Schools are in session and their staff are there if they're in session. No, there's no school on that day, Sandra. Okay. Because there are in lots of communities. I have that day off as well, but whatever. It's in the evening, so. Chris, the Board of Select doesn't have a meeting on that day, do we? Uh, not, we're not scheduled there at the moment, no. Okay. Uh, So the other option is we look at the 19th and, uh, you know, to Mr. Sterndale's point, if we have Zoom backup anyway, if the weather doesn't cooperate and we're still able to hold the meeting um, with as many people as can participate virtually, then that wouldn't be an issue. But I guess, so um, Mrs. Gordon, do you want to check with the school and find out if the 18th is even an option for them? Oh. And then if not, we'll have to look at the 19th. Yeah, I will. Okay. Tim, the downside on the 19th, uh, it's a, a rare occurrence, but uh, should there be a power outage from a storm or any other reason, uh, the 
Zoom wouldn't work so well on, on a power outage time. In person, it wouldn't either. <laughs> so, Kelly, we'll wait to hear back from you then. And yeah, we, we have a meeting next Wednesday, so when I'll, I'll find all that out. Okay. So for now, we'll, we'll go with January 14th for the town. Potentially, we'll pencil in the 18th for the school, and we can work back from there for our schedule for the month of December and November to get some proposed budgets to us. Does that sound good? Good to me. Okay. No. So then we will plan our next meeting unless the board feels that we should meet in October to discuss, I, I, based upon the content for today's meeting and looking at past meetings, I don't think we'd have any additional financials to review. So I'm not sure if it makes sense to have a meeting again in October. So I'm thinking maybe we plan to meet again uh, on the first Thursday in November, which would be November 4th. Good with me. No, that's 2021. No, the first Thursday in November is the 5th. Yeah, the 5th. The yeah. Is that good? Is that what we're doing? We'll do. How many total meetings you think you're going to have? We're going to have. How many times is the school board going to come in front of the budget committee? Just once? Normally, it's been at least twice to present the proposed budget. And then we meet after that as a committee on another meeting and then give the feedback back to the school board. Okay, I'm just counting up the days just to make sure that we are. So when January comes, the beginning of January, we got two months in order to figure everything out. So it's a total of eight meetings if we do one a week. <laughs> Roughly, give or take. I didn't actually look on the calendar, but so if they come back twice, you get three meetings, towns, four. You know, granted, no delays. Uh, if you want to meet with, um, you know, the highway department, the police department, or any of those, you got another meeting set up for those guys. I just don't want to be cutting ourselves um, too thin. Seems like we have three extra weeks, but hope nobody's opposed to scheduling uh, two meetings in a week. So, go ahead, Tim. Sorry. Unless the town or the school board's ready to present uh, a proposed budget in the month of October. Well, I know on October. I'm just, you know, but I'm just saying though, just any preliminary stuff we need to get done should be taken care of. So one of the things that um, the guy in the, the budget workshop said was that when he was on budget committee, um, they would meet with the department heads at the same time as the select board, basically, and kind of like do it on a Saturday and kind of just, not that I'm saying we want to do it on a Saturday, but that's what they would do is do it on a Saturday, have them all come in and make their case for their budgets. Kind of stack them all up in one day. Mm -hmm. It makes that's sense. Yeah, it might have to be an option just because of the way the time is. Scheduled. And remember, we're going to be all done with this way earlier than we usually are because we don't have, after the last week in February, we don't have to worry about anything. Right. It's a deliberative session. It's going on the ballot and the town is going to decide. Correct. I, I think right up until the, la the night before town meeting. Yeah. I, I think realistically, we're going to have to plan on thinking about having two meetings in a week at some point in time um, just because if especially if we're normally meeting on Thursdays knowing that Thursday December 24th and Thursday December 31st I have a feeling nobody's going to want to sit down and meet with the town or the school to discuss budget um, so I, th I think realistically we're, we're going to have to get creative whether it is uh, like, like Mr. Jack has said meeting on a Saturday with the town and all of the department heads and looking at the budget Although last year we didn't even, we did that, I think, just with the highway department. I don't think we met with all of the departments because we didn't need to. So I think it just depends on what's being proposed. But I remember I, um, other, I remember um, the fire department coming in and talking a little bit about their needs. 
but you're, we're on such a compressed schedule. It's, um, it's a lot. Honestly, I think we could probably piggyback on some of the select board meetings, you know, with just if they're, if they have it scheduled with us, you know, to meet with the selectmen, you know, we could listen in on that. If you don't mind pushing the, um, the department heads a little bit to make sure that their budgets are ready on time and maybe a little ahead of schedule. Uh, Just so that we have it ready for this. So that again, we're not delayed. We, we don't have a choice. We have to be ready when the budget committee, you know, uh, Just yeah. making sure. We're, we're gonna we're gonna find a way um, yeah it's it's tough in November to you know that's that's four five weeks from now we're, we're not going to have anything substantive that early uh, on any of the big departments the, the little stuff sure but uh, it's, it's going to be going to be challenging to have everything done in November also don't forget there has to be a default budget too. It's a big change. Yep. Okay, so I, I guess for now we'll focus on meeting on the first. Um, we'll wait to hear from the school board and um, on the proposed date for the 18th and then we'll just move from there. And then I'll work with both Mr. Sterndale and Mrs. Gordon through the month of October to start trying to build a proposed calendar for our next meeting so that we're not starting from scratch on November 5th. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Perfect. And before you move on, uh, the select board talked about the town deliberative session and is inclined to do that on the first available day, the 30th of January. You're talking about January 30th, this Saturday? Right. Yep. And what's the last day that we can have? Is that the following Saturday? Just I'm just thinking if the school, if we want to do the school on a, although the school has typically done it in the evening. Am I correct? Yeah. They the last several years it's been like a Tuesday night. Okay. A Saturday the 6th is the last day for our first session, deliberative session. How does the committee feel about committing to Saturday, January 30th for the town deliberative session? That's fine. Good. Okay, so I will put that on the calendar. Look at that, building the calendar. And that would, uh, would that normally be like the town meeting time frame? Starts at like 8.30 or nine o'clock in the morning? Uh, we've never done it before, but I, I think that's probably what the board had in mind. Nine o'clock okay. start. And uh, that's really as far as we got. We didn't talk where or any more than that. Okay. Any other input on the calendar at all before we move forward? Okay. Mrs. Sterndale, I left you off of the agenda by mistake. Um, I have uh, Mr. Morin on there as the town update, but did you, before, before we jump into that, did you want to present the financials that you had so graciously sent to us yesterday? Uh, sure, I'll always defer to the selectmen first, and then I'm happy to jump in when they tell me to, but, yeah. Would you like to do that? Mr. Moore, did you want to talk through them and let him fill in the gaps? No, no, he, I think I'll, do, I'll be talking through these, but if he had anything general that he wanted to do, I would... Uh... If, just, if people were here, I, mean, I was just going to go over what the select board was doing um, in general, overall, with everything else, but towards the budget, Chris had that um, lined up. So do you wanna cover anything that you'd like to cover in general, Mr. Morin, while he's getting his uh, notes prepared? Sure, just a little update on what the board's doing. Um, 
we are in the process of looking to hire a new chief. We hired a company to help us bring some quality uh, qualified candidates uh, in front of us. Uh, another big thing going on is the sale of the USA Springs property on Route 4. Uh, discussion on that and how we're going to handle that going forward. Uh, and just some general things like if you go around Nottingham Lake, you'll notice it's all nice and paved. Uh, they took care of that. Uh, the third and last water cross for the snowmobile things that happened in Nottingham last weekend. Uh, haven't heard anything negative about it, so that went really well. And we'll see if that continues next year after the planning board um, gets to meet with them. And then uh, we'll just, that's pretty much just a rough what we've been talking about. Thank you very much for that update. Mr. Sterndale. All right, you have uh, two things for me. One is uh, green, well, it was green and yellow when it left me. It may still be green and yellow to you, uh, line by line budget and actual report. And then uh, just a sheet titled budget committee notes with some uh, kind of summary information on it. Um, the line by line budget to actual report is a hot mess. Um, nothing has gone the way we expected it to this year. Um, you know, I, I, for any of us, uh, so the budget plan kind of, uh, went out the window. We've got a lot of lines that are unspent or underspent. We've got a few lines that are way overspent. Um, so, uh, you know, I'll, I'll talk through some of those big variances here if, if you want to. More importantly, the big picture, we're really going to be okay. Um, on the expense side, we're, we're going to finish the year under budget, well under budget, um, perhaps six figures under budget. Um, we, uh, we have incurred some additional expenses, but also um, found some savings as a result of all the pandemic changes. Uh, we were really in the in the springtime. Uh, we were really more worried about revenue. Uh, our, our both our uh, regular property tax uh, receipts, as well as all our our other uh, flavors of taxes or non tax revenue, particularly motor vehicle registrations. Um, March and April, those f just fell off the edge of the table, uh, and and we were really nervous about revenue across the board. Um, but that has really recovered quite nicely. Um, we're, we're on track to, to hit our budgeted number for motor vehicle registrations, which is the second biggest source of income for us. Um, that, uh, that business, uh, you know, broke down in the spring, but rallied over the summer. Um, the legislature didn't take anything away. Um, you know, we, we rely on, uh, rooms and meals tax grant and a highway grant each year. Um, those remained unchanged um, and the checks are still coming in. And uh, we've also got uh, grant revenue related to the pandemic that we've uh, been awarded and captured. So uh, on the revenue side, we're gonna finish uh, right on the number and we actually have some we have some more coming, so we're gonna we're gonna beat the revenue number uh, for the year uh, with the grants that come in. Uh, you're not, you're, you don't see any. You, you, none of those are, are actually in yet, so we're not reflecting them anywhere. But uh, we could we could beat the revenue budget by six figures as well when it's all said and done. Um, the um, we we have pretty good visibility for the rest of the year. Uh, you know, assuming. There, there isn't a, a huge flare up and another shutdown or something. Um, you know, on the expense side, we, we can see pretty well what we have left. Um, if you want to talk about individual line items, like I, I pulled out some notes on the big, the biggest variances, if you were thinking about it from a variance perspective. Um, or we can move to the kind of bigger picture. What does it mean to the tax rate? on that second sheet, if you want. I don't know how, how much time you want to spend on this and what you want to hear about. 
I don't want to speak for the board. I guess, I guess two things, if you wouldn't mind going through some of the larger variances, because I, I think everybody, if you've reviewed it, probably saw it. So you wouldn't mind addressing those. And then um, could you talk maybe a little bit about some of the grants that the town did receive from the state um, for the pandemic? Yep. Um, let's do that first. Um, the, uh, the largest one uh, was originally um, uh, we, I only know it by the acronyms anymore. Gopher uh, is the main acronym. Each town and city in the state was allocated an amount um, that was available to cover unbudgeted expenses related to the pandemic. So it was initially um, kind of a protection against uh, expense blowups. If you if you'd had things that are, you know that came up that you that you hadn't budgeted for, the grants were there. Uh, they have since, since that was issued, they have really relaxed the, the requirements. Um, what they were finding was the towns weren't really incurring huge numbers of extra expenses. You know, you're, you're just paying your police and firefighters to do different things, but you had already budgeted for those things. So um, what that means to us is about, and that particular grant is about 130000 in uh, not unrestricted, but very lightly restricted um, funds for police and fire payroll, essentially. Um, we have submitted for that, but not uh, been approved and sent, you know, received the check yet. But um, there's been a lot of back and forth across two or three bureaucracies and hundreds of meetings and memos and chaos around it. But it, it looks like it has really simplified and uh, is going to turn into about 130000 for us. Um, there was a grant for uh, first responders that pretty much came right from the governor's office. Federal money found its way through to pay additional stipends to what they defined as first responders, meaning police and firefighters. Um, that shows up in our expenses uh, and we've got uh, matching revenue for that. So it's essentially a pass through for us. I think that was about 30,000 total. Um, We've got 11, between 11 and 15,000 in election related grants that are gonna be allocated based on uh, uh, population or checklist size, something like that. Um, we'll have no problem spending that. Uh, we've got a lot of it, uh, incremental costs related to the election. Um, uh, we, we tripped across another $5,000 private funded election grant that we learned of yesterday and applied for this morning. So uh, there's there's little dribs and drabs, but uh, that's the bulk of the uh, unanticipated grant revenue. Um, uh, on the expense side, um, the uh, I'll give you, a, you, you have line numbers on the left-hand side of the sheet there, and I'll, I'll call out uh, some of the ones that are worth mentioning. Um, we'll start with elections and, and the town clerk. Let's uh, start on line 26. You'll see we're well over there. Um, perhaps the town clerk and the recycling center are the two places where day-to-day -day work has been the most disrupted. Um, you know, we uh, it's where most of our interactions with the public are. It's where most of our kind of foot traffic used to be and still is. Um, so uh, lots of changes in, in, the, in how the town clerk has been operating. Um, a lot more uh, mail traffic, a lot more electronic traffic, which still requires paperwork on our end. Uh, and now a significant increase in absentee ballot work. Um, I, I think we're at 800 absentee ballot requests for the November election right now out of a checklist of 3,500 or something like that. Um, they're on top of it, but it is a lot more extra work. Um, there's, there's really two or three transactions for every absentee ballot uh, over the course of a couple of months. So um, it's, a, it's a big change in their workload, uh, but they seem to be on top of it. Uh, it's going to be a long day in early November, but uh, we, they seem to be on top of everything there and have what they need. Um, we've, we've, got the, we've got the equipment we need or, or we are acquiring it. Um, I think we still need some help that day. Um, 
if anybody's interested in, in working at the, at the polls. Um, but generally, we're in good shape. We'll be back to school with a, what we think is a similar layout. Um, and uh, I, I think we're ready. Um, you see election costs being all over the place on lines 35 through 43 also. Um, but that's all shuffling out there. Um, line 78, uh, that's where our, um, our five-year revaluation costs are passing through there. We have a capital reserve fund that's going to pay for those. So those expenses are going to come out of there at the end of the year. Um, that work is uh, pretty much done as of today. We did the last uh, piece of that. We have some more bills to pay for it, but that's all coming out of the reserve account. So um, those, those expenses will leave the operating budget. Um, line 82 is our legal. Um, the courts have slowed down. Our, our, we have a couple of, we now have three lawsuits brewing uh, or underway, uh, but they're, they're really creeping along. Uh, so those, those costs have not come in as fast as we expected. They won't be any less, but they're just going to be slower. Um, could, so, so for the, uh, for that and the town attorney, could you just talk to the total line 81 is, uh, overspent to the budget and, uh, where's, where's the rest of that coming in from? Uh, if you look at line 78. 78's got an actual expense of 32,000 and change. That is the revaluation costs. Those, those expenses are gonna come out of a different account at year end. So um, we're, not 30, we're not 32 over, we're right on in that, in the assessing. That so, the six, so the 6121 um, versus the 37 on line 81. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out what's summing up to which lines here. Yeah, if uh, sorry, I, I, I skipped ahead there a little bit. Line 81 is the is the sum of lines 69 to 80. Oh, okay, thank you. All right, and so that's the, that'll come back into line when when line 78 goes back to zero. Does that thank you. Make sense. Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Um, the next batch uh, is in the 90s. That's our um, uh, personnel administration. It's benefits and, and payroll taxes. Um, we've got we've had vacancies in police, in fire. Uh, those are the two big ones. Um, we're so we're saving money uh, on vacancies um, and line 90 which is titled uh, FICA, um, we're gonna see uh, continually, we're gonna continue to be well under budget on that line because we're capturing some tax credits, uh, also pandemic related uh, for employees out on uh, FEMLA, Family Medical Leave Act for uh, during the pandemic, the, the, rules, uh, the rules loosened up on, on FEMLA and allowed employees uh, who met criteria around health or childcare uh, to take time off and get paid for it. Uh, and the town's gonna get reimbursed by way of tax credit. So that line is going to be well under budget at year end. Um, we may have enough credits in our pocket to, to finish the year there without paying any more uh, FICA taxes. You see the vacancies affecting Lines uh, 91, 92, 93, uh, 94, that's all retirement uh, stuff for our career, uh, police and fire mostly. Uh, one bit of bad news, we did learn that uh, the employer contribution rates for the New Hampshire retirement system are gonna jump noticeably next year, um, probably 10% um, after one of their audits, they're, they're further underwater than they used to be. So. Um, our portion of police and fire uh, retirement is going to go up again uh, midway through next year. Uh, so that's about it for personnel administration. Uh, one, line 129 relates to the old town hall. We incurred a bunch of expenses to get that back in service. We did some electrical work. 
Um, that work is done and the building is back open again for the public. Um, line 132, we uh, just a few weeks ago dug a well at the highway garage. Um, since the highway garage has been built, it's been uh, using a pump in the river. Uh, the river's dry. We couldn't, uh, once again, uh, couldn't flush the toilets uh, and, uh, and learned that that uh, river water might have been contributing to some employee sickness. So uh, we decided it was time to uh, get a real water supply over there um, and will actually allow us to do a little bit more rinsing of our vehicles, which is nice. Um, so that, uh, that line's over. It's going to be over for the year. Um, lines 167 to 169, that's the police payroll, uh, where we, we have a vacancy right now, uh, that will probably be filled at the beginning of the year. Um, the, the best way to look at those lines is to combine them all together. Uh, same with fire. We use a combination of full and part-time people and, uh, per diem people. Uh, you, you throw all those lines together and we're still under budget. Uh, and we'll finish, probably finish under budget there. Line 192, uh, with the delay in town meeting, we couldn't order a police cruiser. Uh, and I think we probably will not for the year. Uh, I don't, I don't even know if they're available at this point. Uh, so we're going to stretch out our fleet. The, the car that would have been traded in is going to have to make it another six months until uh, next year's round. Uh, so we got our fingers crossed there. I, I think it will will make it without massive investments. Um, lines 194 to 196 is uh, fire and rescue payroll. Again, vacancies weighing on us there. We now have two of our three spots filled. Um, we had three filled for a couple times during the course of the year, but um, just lost uh, two firefighters within the last eight weeks uh, that had been in full-time roles. We continue to struggle with um, uh, our uh, being a, a, a training ground and a starting point for career fighter for our firefighters who are headed to larger departments when they leave here. Um, uh, the last two that left, one was just leaving the career and the other was uh, headed to Manchester. Uh, so we, we are looking to fill that opening again. Uh, you see on line 198, uh, what that is typically the stipend pool for the call firefighters, the what you think of as the volunteer firefighters. Um, we don't usually uh, spend that money until around Thanksgiving for the year, but with the special stipends that uh, came through the governor, um, we had uh, we were able to uh, pass that through to uh, not only our career firefighters, but also uh, a lot of our call firefighters as well. Um, moving along to highway. Uh, the biggest line there is uh, 275. We had a big change in plans uh, coming into town meeting. Uh, you may recall the select board suggested that uh, town meeting hold back on the, the plan to do Ledge Farm Road. Um, so we, we uh, pulled out of that project based on the cost and the need to find some tax savings this year um, and reshuffled our work plan for the year and uh, used most of that line that would have gone to Ledge Farm on uh, what was the next project in line out around Nottingham Lake. Um, we're not showing any expenses there yet, but we just, since this was printed, we paid the first of those bills at 117,000 or something. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna end up using most of, that, uh, most of that line by year end. Most of the work is done. Uh, we just haven't got the bills for it yet. Um, and in uh, recycling solid waste, if you look at line 280, uh, we're, we're crushing that budget in a bad way. Um, we are experiencing 
uh, increased hauling costs on a, on a per trip basis. We just, uh, we just got dinged with a, with a rate increase there. Um, and we're also hauling more with the changes in the materials that we're uh, not recycling, uh, particularly cardboard. So, um, with, with all the changes, uh, at the recycling center, uh, this is where it's showing up financially, as I said earlier, that in the town clerk's office are probably where we're feeling it most, uh, feeling the pandemic changes the most. Uh, some of that will return to uh, the old normal and, and some of it probably won't. Um, hauling costs for, for all recycling centers are really climbing uh, in addition to the, the disposal costs that, that creep up every year. Uh, not much change in the, on the revenue side for what's selling and what isn't. There really still is not much of a market for most of our recycled material. Chris, what's the deal with the uh, cardboard? Uh, cardboard right now we are, we are putting in with paper so it's getting recycled, um, but it's, uh, we're not selling it as cardboard, we're just selling it as paper. So we make a lot less for it and we, and we have to transport it more often. What's, what's causing that though? Uh, our choice to uh, not uh, bail it, not, not have people bring it into the building and, and bail the cardboard. Uh, I see. That was uh, primarily a um, uh, reduce the foot traffic, reduce the contact for our employees of, uh, you know, card, we touch every piece of cardboard that comes through in order to bail it. So um, we, we have, uh, we, we may have reached the point where we could start doing that again. We're, we're down a person over there as well. Um, and that's a very labor intensive process to uh, touch every piece of cardboard that comes in. So um, we are gonna go back to bailing cardboard as soon as we feel like we can. And as soon as we know we don't have to flop back and forth. Um, we've been really careful to try and not turn the switch on and off and on and off for our users up there. It's really hard for people to, um, you know, it's hard for us to lay changes on people at the recycling center. People have been doing things a long, a long time the same way. Uh, it's really hard to communicate everything and get everybody's routines changed. We don't want to do that often and on and off and on again uh, to the users at the recycling center. So Chris, can I ask a question about that? The, uh, the, the cardboard situation. So we get less money if we throw the cardboard in with the paper, um, but that can be done. Essentially, people can just throw it in there. It doesn't have to be handled or have any labor associated with it versus bailing. Uh, what's the cost breakdown on paying someone to bail it and handle all the cardboard versus just accepting the lower price and, and having the convenience of just throwing it all into the, the dumpster out there and having it unattended? Uh, we, we're going to do that math. Uh... A, probably another, we need another month or two of, um, of data from our sales of the materials or our, our disposal costs for the materials. Uh, we are thinking about it the same way. We just, the, the lag on uh, billing and shipping and all that stuff, uh, in order to get to enough information to really study it, you need several months. So um, we're asking that same kind of question. Um, gotcha. Is there a state? Is there any state law about we have to have attendance for various things? No. Okay. I had noticed something with Stratford about that, and so I was I was questioning that because I, I kind of like the move where they put the uh, the aluminum can bin outside and all that stuff. Um, a previous place I had lived, the recycling center had no employees on site whatsoever. There was just massive, massive, essentially dumpsters for each item, um, and that always seemed to go pretty well. Yeah, I think I, we may need to have, we, we, our people are, are licensed uh, operators um, and we probably need to have a licensed operator on site anytime we're open. Um, I'd have to go back and look at the, the regs, but um, uh, the, the, the users need it. Uh, not, only, not only because we need to physically move a lot of the materials we're, we're dealing with, but people just need help knowing what to do. So, um, but uh, I think we'll do the same thing with, with aluminum at year end. We'll say, you know, is this, uh, is this just, as, just as good not crushing the cans and, uh, and, and selling them, you know, tr shipping them less frequently. When you crush them, you don't have to bring them uh, as often. 
uh, I think we've probably come close to making up our mind that we're not going back to doing cans the old way. Um, the, 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 the workload versus uh, revenue difference and all that stuff is, uh, and, the, and the ease for the user to be able to do all that outside is all, I, I think that, that decision is darn near made. Great. I don't think we're going back. But, uh, we, we are thinking about it the way that you, you laid it out. Excellent, thank you. Uh, and then the last on the expense side, both REC and the library are, are where we've seen the greatest curtailment and activity. And you'll see that those budget line items are, are way under. Um, uh, we're, we're in both places trying to come back to the old normal and level of programming, but um, obviously have not reached that point yet. Um, those will all finish well under budget. That's all I had on, on expenses, unless you have questions about anything. The, there was a consulting line item. I'm trying to find it again. That was uh, in, a, in an overspend. I'm not sure if that rings a bell right offhand. Yeah, that's probably, um, that's in high, it's probably showing up in highway. It's around 11,000 bucks maybe. Um, that is a, uh, we're doing boring studies and uh, some engineering evaluation of our gravel pit. Uh, that's one of the uses that we'd identified with the change in plan around Ledge Farm Road and that $300,000 line item. Uh, we're, I think we're going to see that report shortly, but uh, we're trying to find out uh, how much winter sand, we, we use the pit really for winter sand, how much winter sand do we have left? And do we have a market available to us that might be interested in buying whatever else is at our gravel pit? Uh, and that's what that's gotcha. doing. Thank you. So Tim, that other that summary sheet was intended to be kind of self-explanatory, but I'm happy to you know wander through that if you want. Um, we're getting close to tax rate setting, but we're not there yet. Um, I don't have any questions on it. Does anybody else have any questions on the budget committee notes that Chris had put together um, on the tax rate? Or on the rebound that um, there's always questions that come up with that. Um, John's really on, on top of that stuff too, if anybody has any questions about that. The preliminary number that's shown at the top there, 796, that's final now, that, we booked that today. Um, so we're, we're locking in at, at basically an $800 million valuation for town. Well, there's no more questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Sterndale. I appreciate all the work. Uh, I know it's been a very strange seven months for you, so we appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Miss Gordon, you're up next. Is it, um, can I share my screen? Yep, I can. Okay, so um, let's see. I sent along the audited financials. I had presented them last time, and um, but I sent along the actual report of the audited financials from last um, school year. Uh, our fund balance came back officially at $273,225.21. We did vote at the last meeting to retain 1.5% um, of the original budget. Um, which came out to $158,783.54. We did that um, with uh, mostly because of the increase we're seeing um, with the COVID related expenses, which I can share a little bit about. Um, our final unaudited fund balance then that we were returning to um, would be $114,441.86. And that's our it's um, done and audited and everything we're going to do with it is complete. Um, and so we are in quarter one of our budget and um, 
So I don't really have a whole lot to present. I just have it broken down by function here. Um, there are no surprises. There is nothing alarming in our quarter one. Um, it seems that we have fixed the problem at one point. Um, our system was reporting out on jobs in two different places for some reason, but that seems to have been fixed. So um, we are on track with our um, quarter one financials here. Uh, this is the more important sheet I wanted to show you. So these are actuals, our cash flow in and our cash flow out. So right now we are um, fine, but if you follow this through, um, we are projected, this is based on, these projected estimates are based on a three year um, history. So we are projected to be overspending our budget by January 31st. Um, which was really alarming for the school board. So um, a motion was made at our last meeting to freeze um, our budget and have the superintendent review any non-contractual spending to ensure that we do not overspend. Um, and if there's a situation that arises where we may need to do that, um, the superintendent would then alert the board on that. Um, we received $27,000 in grant money from the state for COVID related um, funding. And so far we have spent way over that already. Um, just with our um, PPD, I mean our PPE and uh, updating our software for all of the remote services, webcams and microphones for live streaming and synchronous teaching. Um, Go Guardian, which is a defense that protects our students, whether they're at home or at school. Um, we had to upgrade our internet bandwidth. Um, we needed battery sprayers, mask respirators, um, adult and child face masks, Zoom software for all of the Zooming that we've been doing. Um, Apple, we had to update our Apple iPads for the younger kids. Um, storage containers, just things that we didn't expect. Um, and so the CARES Act funding, I believe will, I don't think they've actually quite figured out what they're going to cover with that 27,000 and what is going to come out of the operating budget. Um, so that's where we are at. Kelly, I have a question. When you say freeze the budget, does that mean you're freezing it where it was before, or you're freezing the increases? Like, if you freeze the budget, does that mean you're still going to run out of money in three months or so? No. Um, so we have frozen the budget so that that can't happen. Um, okay. We can only spend what we have budgeted, and if any line needs to be overspent for any reason, um, the superintendent would have to um, approve that and then alert the board so that it, we, we won't be overspending by January. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's early on to predict that and given the past, using the past three years as a model with the differences we're seeing with just even the teaching model in school right now, uh, the, our financial um, person doesn't foresee that being a big, that it's really gonna happen, but it was alarming enough that we thought it was um, prudent to freeze it and make sure it doesn't. Have you guys been cutting spending elsewhere? like 3D printer supplies or anything like that? Um, yeah, we, we've been, okay. so we're early, early on in our budget. And you, I can tell you we've been, um, yeah, things like that. Nobody's using the 3D printer right now. Um, so that's exactly what we're looking to recover some of this. Oh, and I did find the answer to the Dover bus. So, um, that overspend was so strange. We did, we overspent our Dover bus, this was in our last um, budget, by $4,000 and it was um, a contract. So that was a strange situation. But what I discovered was we had added a stop early on and then the actual contract was um, expanded to account for that stop. I guess it added 10 minutes on to every single um, route every single day. And I know I still have a lot of questions about it just because we did stop using the bus in March. And so, you know, that bus stop was then not being used for three months. So 
Um, we are still looking into that, but that is why the original $4,000 overspend happened. Um, and I think if, uh, so I, I don't know, we're still looking into why it continued after we stopped using the buses. I, I have a question about the uh, projected overspend. Yeah. If, uh, if, if those previous three years were pre COVID and that's what the basis is on and the spend um, seems to be higher now based on, you know, all everything that has to happen with COVID when those projections end up being light based on, you know, the increased spend that we hadn't seen before. So we don't know um, because there's rev revenue offset too that we didn't count on such as the food service right now. Um, so we're getting extra revenue through that and where there's fewer kids in the building. And so we really don't know right now. We're so early in our budget. We're hoping that by quarter two, we'll have a much better feel for how accurate those are. Um, okay. But we Thank wanted you. to be really careful because we can't overspend our, our budget. <laughs> sure. Thank you. Any other questions for Ms. Gordon on the school financials? So, sorry. I had one that might be sort of procedural uh, or just a general question on the audited financials that were sent. Yeah. Um, under the other matters, there's a list of there's uh, some conversation around uh, a manager a management's discussion and analysis, and that you know although it doesn't impact the figures, it's typical to you know good practice. So I was curious, is that just typical uh, for Nottingham in general, or or is there any other discussion around that? Um, I'd have to get back to you on that. As far as I know, it's typical in general, and Nottingham needs to um, be sure it's happening. And that we had so much turnover in our whole department that a lot, um, a lot of the procedural stuff didn't go as smoothly as it could have, and there needs to be cross training and all that kind of stuff. And so, I think the the that piece of it was just to make sure that those things are happening. Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, thank you. I was just trying to figure out if there was any risk to the town of that not being completed in the financials from any type of audit perspective or anything like that. Uh, so, no, it's just like moving forward, it needs to be in place. And they are in process of rewriting procedures to make sure there's cross training and um, that kind of thing in place. Thanks so much. Kelly, just to follow up on something I'd asked back in the summer, has there been any change to enrollment from people, parents that uh, wanted to, you know, continue on homeschooling their children or enroll them in, say, a private school or anything? If you give me a minute, I can find the answer to that. Um, I have enrollment projections in my packet. Um, so as far as I can, I can answer from what I know, but then I can send you the actual enrollment projections. I can send them to all of you if you would like. Um, I'm just going to make a note of that. So we had, the enrollment hasn't changed drastically. Um, just there are several remote students now who are not accessing the building, but are still accessing our teachers and our technology and that and our curriculum. Um, so in that case, there's, there's less people in the building. Our enrollment has stayed pretty solid. We did lose a few kindergartners. Um, so we actually are teaching physically less kindergartners than we thought. But other than that, enrollment hasn't changed a whole lot. At the high school level, there's been switching back and forth between the high schools, but we have not had a surge of people pulling out to homeschool. But I can send you um, an enrollment, uh, an updated enrollment report if you guys would like to see that. Okay, great, thank you. I'll do that. And then do you have a new business person now with the school district? I, I know it was interim, but is, is there somebody full time? Um, right now, we still have someone that we're contracting who is working three days a week. Um, we are paying him hourly to do those three days a week and we're paying his transportation back and forth. So right now we are in process of trying to figure out 
whether it makes more sense to pay someone hourly three days a week to do the job or to hire to um, look for a, per a permanent um, business administrator who would come in and do the job as part of our district. So that is right now we're using that um, person that we have contracted, but we are looking to see what is the better option at this point. Thank you. Any other questions for the school board? Thanks, Kelly, appreciate it. Sure. On to the committee reports and Mr. Decker, I apologize. I left you off um, with the SAU reporting, um, but I can add you just after CIP with Michelle if there's any updates there. But if we wanna start with school facilities, Mr. Keister, any updates from that committee? Michael, you're, mu you're muted. Yeah, you can't hear me. That must be better. Um, we've met uh, via Zoom on and off throughout the summer, including a meeting uh, at 3.30 today. Uh, the initial application for the state building aid was submitted on schedule at the end of June. Uh, should Nottingham School Board be selected to receive state money it could be likely in the neighborhood of, of maybe 20, 28, 29% of the, of the whole project cost. Um, while this is not clear that the state will not suspend the program, there have been no um, notifications or indications that they, as, as yet, that they will. Um, our estimated total project cost as shown on the state application was about uh, what 5.9 million, and um, what impacts the pandemic will have on future building design is not known, and until experience over the coming months provide us with some more detail on that, we are proceeding with the pre-COVID plans. Um, in the next meeting next week, we will be looking at how to best communicate the project status and particulars to the Nottingham public. Our uh, last community forum last winter was so pre-COVID that we will be discussing uh, the logistics of new formats for getting information to the community and hearing their concerns. Uh, perhaps small scale neighborhood Zoom discussion meetings was mentioned today as a, a possibility that they might look into. Uh, or some other suitable replacement of in-person physical gatherings as uh, we are used to in old days. Um, for meeting the next steps of the requirements for the state aid application, uh, the committee is in the process of lining up uh, a construction manager, which is necessary for refining the projects not to exceed cost, which is due uh, sometime in December, I believe. And should we be selected to receive state aid, we will also be, we also need to uh, bring on an uh, owner's rep to work with a construction manager in some oversight role as required by the state. That's pretty much where we are uh, through today. And uh, anybody have any questions? Uh, Mike, uh, yeah. since the pandemic, uh, I think most of us have seen a shortage in building materials, as well as a real increase in the cost of those materials because of supply and demand. Uh, what kind of contingency do you have in your proposal uh, for these increased costs that we're probably going to experience? We, we, the only thing we've got so far is just the estimate um, from the, the architect based on his tables of, of what things cost for how many square feet kind of thing. Um, they, they don't really build a contingency amount into that estimate, but when we get the construction manager on board to make a refined, not to exceed the estimate, that's where we'll have a better handle on what he expects the real cost to be in, in uh, you know, next summer when, when the project would go forward if, if we're to uh, lock in the state aid and, and get the bond approval from the citizens. Has alternate uh, 
contracting methods been explored as far as bringing in the owner's rep sooner to help with the bidding process to then go out to a design build firm that the construction manager would, you know, sort of take the project from that spec all the way through at the end. Um, um, no, and what we're doing, we're, we're leaning on our, our architect to, to kind of guide us through that process. Uh, it's not clear when the state says you must have the owner's rep on, on your, on your uh, project. Um, we heard today that, that there's been some, some back and forth about that. And if we find a suitable construction manager prior to that and wait until, uh, well, we'd, we'd wait until we actually get uh, approved funding from the state before hiring the owner's rep. Um, so that, that would be you know, next late winter before that would happen. Uh, so, you know, if, if we brought on a construction manager, say in, in a month, month and a half, um, then the, the amount of time that an owner's rep would be on, on the payroll would be uh, considerably less had we brought that guy on first. That hasn't been suggested by the, the architect, so we're just going with uh, guidance. Um. I ask because in in sorting out the risk for the project, um, you know, we could work with the the rep or the construction manager, address the risk, put some contingencies to those risks, and then carry them in that final estimate that is then ultimately, you know, uh, set forth as the not to exceed price. And then as we re reduce those risks throughout the course of the project, whether it be through, you know, confirmation of various items or contracts being executed, we're rolling that risk back out of project and, and you know what's in there. Um, so just curious to know what that whole process is, is shaping up as. So. Yeah. I really don't have any experience to, to guide me in, in uh, deciding what works and what doesn't. Um, so I'm, I'm just kind of reporting what we've done so far uh, without uh, sharing any of my own personal uh, guidance or, or expertise on that. Are you uh, one of the, the bidders for, or um, have you, has your firm presented a, a, a RFQ a response? No, I'm not involved at all in the, other than a resident of the town. I, I guess uh, just my previous construction experiences bringing up these questions, I guess. Yeah. Thank you. Maybe we can find a way to uh, to get you to be involved in in the the committee. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay, I'll mention to Susan that uh, that we have somebody that's got some expertise and interest. Appreciate it. Any other questions for Mr. Keister? Thank you, Michael. Appreciate it. Welcome. Moving on, Michelle, has there been a, any CIP update? No, I haven't received any emails um, about anything, but I think that was not any different than the person who had it before me. So but as soon as I know something, I'll be the first to know. Thank you. And lastly, Mr. Decker, any updates on the SAU transition? Every week, um, so a few members met with the select board. Is, it, is anybody else having trouble hearing you? Yeah, Chuck, you speak up. We can't hear you. All right, hang on. I think I was double muted. Can you hear me now? Much better. <laughs> Much better. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. So yes, yeah, so a lot. Uh, we've been meeting every every week uh, a few members of the committee met with the select board and then they gave us permission to uh, meet with um, Mr. Sterndale to look at uh, potential options at property that could be you know, available for 
housing uh, SAU department in town, um, which, you know, there's a, a potentially a good option at the old or at the um, town office building. Um, we've focused mostly on the financial aspects of the SAU and what um, what roles and responsibilities and staff that we would need to continue if we broke off. Um, and we've we've got a pretty good budget uh, sort of narrowed down for that. Uh, we've also have been um, uh, putting together the, the actual report. We've made pretty good progress on that and we are planning um, to go forward with that, uh, with the State um, Department of Education in like, I, I think we're looking at either October or November, their meeting. So we would have to have a hearing before that. Um, and we'll, we'll be posting that pretty soon, as soon as we get that ironed out. Um, Kelly, is there anything else to add to that? No, I think that that covers it. All right, great, so just, thank um, you. So I'm clear. So when you when you get all the numbers together, is that something you then present to the town, and then we put it on to vote to remove to to remove ourselves from the SAU? Or is, is that right? You? So we would we would have a a hearing. Um, that we would have, you know, basically present our report at a hearing to the town, and then we would go forward from there. We would bring it to the um, state board of education, where they would have to either approve it or make other recommendations or changes. And then once that's ready, then it would get put on the ballot in March. And so, uh, is this something you're thinking could potentially be in 2022? on the ballot in 2022 or actually 2021? It would be on a 2021 ballot. It has to be. Um, it's basically a one year study. Um, if for some reason, if we didn't get it done, we would have to go back and vote again to establish another um, planning committee. So we unfortunately did get a little bit of a late start with the COVID thing in the town hall and the town meeting being delayed and stuff like that. But uh, we've made a lot of progress meeting every week. Great, thank you. Any other questions? All right, thanks. Fantastic. Uh, well, the next agenda item is reviewing the minutes and accepting the minutes. We've already done that. And so we're on to parting thoughts. Any parting thoughts from anybody? One thing I would like to mention is that um, I know that uh, Chief Foss is retiring uh, as of December 31st. Mr. Morin, I, I believe the town is doing some sort of virtual or some sort of retirement celebration for him. Is that true? Uh, we haven't finalized anything or what we're going to do. Okay. There most likely will be something that we're going to do for him as a town uh, for all his years of service, but those plans haven't been finalized or, or put together totally yet. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, just as a, a parting thought, I think with the, uh, the pandemic affecting everybody's uh, well, a lot of people's employment and the large number of tax bills that are still unpaid um, that we should be cognizant throughout our, our duties this year to try to reduce the budget as much as we can, um, whether that be if we set some sort of goal like a 5% total budget reduction or something, just, just to, to keep in mind throughout the year. Yeah, I, actually, I, Mr. Sterndale stepped off, but I did ask him for those numbers, because you had you had actually brought that up at our July meeting, um, he the, he had made it some, in his reply. It didn't sound like there were actually that 
more unpaid property tax bills than in years past um, or quarters past. Uh, it sounds like you might be seeing something different, but I can, I'll put in an email to him to actually present that to us at our next meeting. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's, there was just last time I looked, there was a hundred or so, and those are all people that are potentially going to lose their house. So it's something to always be thinking about that we are, whenever we are spending money. Mm -hmm. Just so you know that the, the town, money, huh? just so you know, the town of Nottingham, uh, sitting on the board of select, has never or won't ever take somebody's house due to back taxes if it's their sole residence. We've never done that. We never will do that, as long as I'm sitting here. Just because Good. somebody can't pay, because in the long run, the town always gets paid. So when they go to sell or something like this. Want to tax lien, but we will never take somebody's house or kick somebody out because they can't pay their taxes. Yeah, well, I mean, if you throw a tax lien on somebody and force them to sell their house, you kind of well, not force them to do anything. I mean, they can yeah. pay it back. They can do whatever you know. It's but we're not going to forcefully remove somebody or take somebody out of somebody's house if it's their you know primary resident because they can't pay their taxes. The town has been very lenient over the years, just as everybody knows about offering help and assistance to people that can't pay taxes and working out deals with them in order to get themselves back whole um, before going to any, you know, legal purposes or anything with them where, you know, just, you know, we're not in that market of taking anybody's and we're going to do the best we can. I understand. It's just, I think, I think I just, if we're talking openly, you know, Kelly, no offense, not to you, but you know, it's the school that we're going to really watch out for that budget. That's going to affect your tax rate and your dollar more than anything else and, around here. You know what? I think we should. I think you should watch out for a budget. And the other thing is um, our evaluations are so much higher. I mean, it's just one more thing to keep in mind. Um, our tax rates are going up. Um, uh, the tax rate will go down this year. Uh, but, you know, you're looking over five years from now because of the valuations being so yeah. much higher. Then they'll creep back up again. It's you know, true. If we, and if we go to eighteen dollars for a thousand, it's at a level pretty much off of what most people were paying last year. But if it starts creeping up and creeping up in two more years, we're back to twenty two, then people will actually see the real effect of this rebound. Mm -hmm. So that's what you have to this year I don't think we'll see too much panic in what people's taxes are going to be as an increase, where you'll see it more in two to three years where your rate of taxes will go higher than what people's average income will increase and that's well in another place we'll see it is at our sau as a whole sure. i mean a portion of the the three town two town next year sau is going to go up and that's going to affect our budget so absolutely I mean, absolutely that's why again from what uh, john's committee was on to you know try to find a way to if we can get out of that and save the town you know half a million dollars and that would be great you know i mean I'm all for it if we can save money and not all about the school budget. Yep. I think with as, as much bad it. news as we've gotten in 2020, it would be nice to give someone a, a lower tax bill in 2021. It absolutely would be. And again, it's not um, impossible, you know, but again, we'll all do our due diligence. I'm sure. I just have a uh, question for the budget committee. Uh, it's more of a procedural question. Uh, in the past, have we ever given some guidelines to the departments and whatnot in terms of what we would expect the budget to come in at, say, as a percent, you know, 2 percent, 3 percent, kind of give some guidelines for them to aim at instead of just doing a zero-based budget and coming up with some, some number that may not be realistic? Just a question for the board. <clears throat> Well, I think most of the departments that I know of, you know, like the police and budget, they're standardized stuff that they're going to pay for every single year that's in there. It's usually what changes their budget is uh, extra new costs that will come in. Um, if you look historically over the police department's budget, the, the, the increase that you see is, again, more for retirement things, state things, other, you know, fees that have increased. It's not actually to do or, you know, town's growing bigger. You need to add another cop. Uh, highway departments a budget where you can actually look at about expenditures and find ways to cut from them. Uh, that would be one way of, you know, when we talk as a select board, you know, something to look at, you know, cause that's a big expense, you know, for what they spend, but then even the recycling guys saw the numbers on there. 
I always propose a twenty dollars that everybody in town that wants to use the recycling center pays one year fee uh, twenty dollars just to offset the cost of the trailing of all the stuff that's going out because those costs increase. It's pretty cheap to get rid of your trash for twenty bucks a year, you know. But that's another thing that you know we have to find ways to increase our revenue in order to bring down our budget on our end. So those are ideas. But again, I don't think it's fair to ask those guys to, you know, put a number out there and say, see if you can hit it. You know, I think that'd be a tough uh, task for any of the department heads, especially with the uh, employees being their biggest expenses and whether they're going to be there or not there. You know, I mean, we could, of... we could potentially just ask them to see if they can turn in a budget that's 5% below last year's. That, absolutely. Nothing wrong with that. Any other thoughts? Okay, so we have our next meeting scheduled um, for Thursday, November 5th. In the meantime, get out and vote, and we'll see you two days after the presidential election. Enjoy your evening, everyone. Thanks for attending. I appreciate it. Um, and we'll see you next month. In the meantime, I will send an email about a week prior to that meeting with an agenda and the information and then hopefully some proposed scheduled meeting dates for the month of November and December so that you all can plan ac accordingly. Oh, one last thing on Saturday, they'll have the concert series. Uh, the rec um, down at the, the, what do you want to call it? The community building, community center or whatever. Uh, the Nottingham our food uh, pantry will be accepting donations and that's the leading reason for this event so if you're passing by you want to donate a check or you want to just you know it's five bucks stop listening to some music you know all the uh, things will help out since they uh again as we say people are hurting people need uh you know food and stuff like that and that the uh, program that we're running you know really all relies on donations and us as a community coming together so if you're passing by there, just take a minute to stop. That'd be great. And you can hear some music going. Not that so, it matters, but who's playing? <laughs> uh, there's actually a list on there. You can see there's like six bands. It's going all day. I hadn't seen there's that. a Led Zeppelin band going on, I think, around like uh, a tribute band going on around like 3 o'clock or something like that. So, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Can I get a motion to uh, close our meeting today? I'll make a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, Aye John Decker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tim. Nice, uh, nice first meeting. Thanks. <laughs> I'll, I'll get better, I promise. <laughs> All right. You did very well. It was great. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Good night.